Welcome to MS Creative as we are at Solusi University. We are in conversation with Professor Kate Guebu, the current dean for the School of Health Professions. Professor Guebu, welcome to MS Creative as. Thank you, Mr. Mkanda. Now that you have come through, I know you bring a lot of experience under your belt. Please do share with us. Who is Professor Guebu? Introduce yourself. I am uh, Eratilwe Noku Guebu, born and raised in Gwanda, South Zimbabwe. And I come from a large family. We were seven kids in my family, and I'm the only girl stuck in the middle. Well, you remind me of one uh, girl who, who was an only girl. In, in, in my family, we, we also have an only girl. And um, this particular girl could not differentiate between only and lonely. And uh, she would say, I'm the lonely girl in my family. I hope you're not the lonely girl. No, I never saw myself as lonely. Uh -huh. No, because uh, the brother I came after was a busy buddy that he always uh, made me <laughs> busy too. <laughs> busy too. Always had something for the little sister. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. And um, uh, you, you are a professor of nursing, right? Yes, sir. So as far as uh, your nursing experience, has it always been in the academic arena or you have had to practice prior to that? Uh, I had to practice. I have a long history of uh, nursing practice. I started at uh, Mpilo Hospital uh, where I did my diploma three-year diploma. I went there in 1970 and I completed in the end of uh, 72. I had started January, so it was three years. January 1, 1973, I started uh, working as uh, a sister at Mpilo Hospital. All right. Then uh, in 1974, I did midwifery, but I was still not satisfied with uh, nursing. Uh, I wanted a degree because I had done A-levels at Teguani. And so I decided that I, when I finish, I'll go to the U.S. or somewhere and go do a degree. And so I wanted to go to the U.S. to do um, a degree in uh, uh, mathematics for secondary education. So in 1975, August, I left to go to the U.S. It was not go easy going to the U.S. because you had to get a, a British passport first in order to travel. We could not travel with the Rhodesian passport then. So I had to go to Botswana, apply, and then come back, work. Then after I got the news, I got the British passport. Then I had to get a visa to go to the U.S. So... August 1975, I finally flew to the U.S. As, as a British uh, citizen? As a British citizen, yes. All right. Okay, okay. And, uh, and, and as you got there, did you venture into other areas of nursing practice? Uh, when I got there, uh, I had thought that the $900 that I had carried with me was enough for my schooling, only to find that it, it did not have accommodation covered. I had to find my own accommodation, so life was tough. I had to work 16 hours a day and then go to school in the morning, most of the time, and working as a nursing assistant because the nurses council in uh, Ohio, the state of Ohio did not accept my uh, license for uh, registered nurse license from Zimbabwe because I did not have mental health then. So I worked as a nurse's aide, getting $1.60 an hour. Man. And that must have been a pittance. It wouldn't cover much. No, it didn't. But there were some people who really helped. One lady one time paid uh, some money for me to clear my bills at the university. All right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and did you subsequently get your, your mental health qualification? No, I did not get my mental health qualification. So what I did uh, when I went there, I was uh, to get a visa. All right. Okay. Mm. I applied for business administration. So for a couple of months, I went to the university where I was doing business administration. Then I transferred to another university now to do mathematics for secondary education. And then uh, that's when 
uh, I, I didn't have books, and my, mas- my, my lecturers didn't know that I didn't have books. I always do, did my uh, assignments in the library. Every course I took, I would go to the library and tell them to reserve me the textbook in the uh, library, and I would go there and do all my assignments. My teachers never knew until one day the teacher said, uh, open your books, and I had no book to open. He said, all this time you don't have no book? I said, no, say I did Why? I, don't, I cannot afford. But how come you're doing well? I said, I use the books in the library. And so thereafter, uh, I, I applied for a scholarship from the United Nations, and the United Nations gave me a scholarship. But they told me, you have to do nursing because you have a background in nursing. And so I ended up... Uh, doing nursing and I have not regretted. And in nursing, have you have you um, ventured into other areas or departments of nursing? I had you mentioned midwifery when you were still in, at Impilo. Yes. In your nursing profession, have you practiced in other areas? Yes, I have uh, practiced as an, a sexual nurse uh, examiner, uh, sexual abuse nurse examiner, where you work with the crisis center, those who have been raped, and uh, they, they want to litigate, then you examine them and produce the results for court. And so I did that uh, when I was working at uh, Oakwood. Why? Because we were required by the uh, state in which I worked, that was Alabama, to keep practice. If you teach, must, but you must also work to, pit, to keep practice so that you can be up to date. Okay, so I did that. I also did hospice so that I could keep practice. So that helped me. But I also did mental health. I worked in mental health. I worked in oncology. I also worked in med surgery. I also worked in the intensive care unit for children. All right. So the, the, this sounds like a very, you know, wide, wide, wide range of experience. You, you have worked with uh, children, pediatrics, oncology, that's uh, cancers, yes. mm-hmm. um, medical surgery, that's, um, you know, assisting Diabetes doctors. and all heart right. p- problems all and right. all those. All those. Mm-hmm. Man, that's, that's, that, that's a wealth of experience. Mm-hmm. And at, at what point did you then venture into academics and uh, leave the actual nursing practice? Uh, what happened was that uh, as I was uh, doing bedside nursing at one of the local hospitals in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, Huntsville Hospital, uh, we had a couple of patients that were too big in weight. And so we would put them in what we called big, big boy bed, that wide, wide, wide bed. Uh-huh. And we had to turn them and walk them. And I realized with age, I could never do that, turn them and walk them. So I decided, mm, best bet is to go to school <laughs> and teach, right. because then I won't be turning patients, I won't be walking patients, because I won't have the strength then. When, when you age, your, straight, your strength wanes as well. So I decided to, academics is my way out. All right. Mm-hmm. At least all you would lift is just your finger and strike a few exactly. keys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, the, I think that was a good call. That was a good call. And, and then um, uh, in terms of your academic uh, education, you had mentioned that uh, at some point the uh, United Nations gave you a scholarship. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, it, was, it was for which qualification again? It was for my Bachelor of Science in Nursing. All right. Yes. Uh, and I was getting, a, uh, they were paying my tuition, pay, uh, buying me books, and also giving me a stipend. All right. So I wasn't uh, struggling anymore like I used to. All right. So in 1981, I graduated. When we, I graduated, we came to Zimbabwe, and, but now 1985, we went back, and then when I went back, I went back into nursing. Then in 1993, I started, I started my uh, you know, master's in nursing at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, where I had done my BS, C right. in nursing. All right. In 95, I graduated. Uh, when I graduated, Oakwood uh, invited me to join the nursing um, faculty. So I did right. then. So, so, so your academic um, journey begins at Oakwood? 
in terms of teaching. Teaching, yes, yes, yes well, yes, in terms of yes, teaching. In terms of teaching. Oh, all right, okay, that's great, that's great. And and um, as as you're developing, going through this this journey, um, is there um, a young man who once spoke to you and won your heart <laughs> somewhere along the way? Yes, uh, yes, uh, there is. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got to uh, Ohio, and uh, we, you know, I, I, I went to visit my cousin mm -hmm. uh, at Kent State, and uh, my cousin was uh, the girlfriend to my husband's cousin. So right. then from there, things work the way they have, uh -huh. and here we are today. And you've never looked back? No. How many, how many years in marriage? We were married in 1977, so up to now we are looking at uh, September 3 to be 45 years. So 45. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. We, we are hoping as uh, young people, your children, mm -hmm. um, that if the Lord doesn't come sooner, we may age in love and marriage. I pray you do. Amen. I pray you do. Because the Bible does say mm -hmm. that uh, age mm -hmm. with the wife of your youth. Amen. You know, some people remarry, and they, when they remarry, things don't turn out that good. So if you can age with uh, the spouse of your youth, mm -hmm. you share problems in a manner that is not hostile. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm now, um, you, you, you have interacted with uh, nurses, you have interacted with uh, students in the classroom. Uh, are, there, are there any students that have um, left an uh, impression on you that you can say, you know, there's a student I, I interacted with at such mm -hmm. and such a place. That one still comes to mind. Yes, mm -hmm. there are many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I have interacted with both black and white. I interacted with uh, some African students at Oakwood who were having a hard time, but I worked with them and most of them are accomplished now. And I look back and say, my goodness, God is good. Uh, some are nurse anesthetists and making much more than I make. <laughs> Not here at Toulouse, right. but I mean, even in the U.S., they were making much more than I make. Mm -hmm. And then um, within the U.S., there were some students among the Caucasians that I taught at Tidewater Community College. Up to now, we still communicate because of how uh, they perceived me and how I perceived them. We just, you know, we helping each other. I understood the Caucasian race and they uh, understood me, you know, very well. So that was really good because I began to understand others better than I had before. Because when I left Oakwood in, nine, in 2003, I went to teach at uh, Tidewater Community College, which is predominantly a white institution. I taught in nursing. And uh, I taught the, uh, until 2012, okay. from 2003. All right. So. And um, there are always some who will give you a headache. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. How, how have, you, have you dealt with those that did not uh, comply or, or tore the line? Um, Let's start with the, the, the nurses. Mm -hmm. in, nursing students. Nursing yes. students or, or even subordinates that you had to work with. With. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, the, um, the professionals that I had to work with, uh, most of them were good. Um, but some were, you know, uh, kind of uh, discriminatory. Like... Um, when I first worked in one hospital in the U.S., I was always given the worst patients, but I never complained because I knew that was going to give me the advantage to learn things quickly. 
and it did help me a lot. And after a while, when they realized that I had learned things quickly, it be, I became a friend. So I always tell people, when you go to a new place, all the challenges that are there are intended for your benefit, not as a barrier to success, but for you to do well. And you always look for those who will support you, who will give you strength. Uh, you look for those who are easy to approach, and you ask. Don't do things without asking. Ask, because every place you go to, there is a culture there that you have to master before you can be accepted there. With the students, uh, I have had the challenges of attendance. You know, students don't want to come class sometimes. But yet we have policies that said, policies that say they must attend class. I keep attendance. I keep attendance because I want the students to learn not to just pass, but be competent and skilled practitioners. And so attendance is important, is important because that's how they learn. And so I have had students who have challenged my roster, but it didn't go anywhere because of documentation. Me, I document everything. I don't rely on my mind remembering, but I document. So I have what I call paper trail. So my paper trail has saved me from litigation. You see, in the U.S., they litigate a lot, even in academics. So I, this is how I have survived in the U.S. academic arena, by paper trail and making sure that I'm transparent. That's one thing even my students will tell you. That lady's hard, but she is honest, and she's just, and she's fair to everyone. Me, I go about policies, and this is why I can say I am fair, because I apply policies equally. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Prof. Quill. Some of the highlights so far that we have covered. Spend the afterlife. Spend the twilight of your life with the spouse of your youth. And while you're there, make sure you keep open communication. And in the spaces where you operate, you want to make sure you document you want to make sure you, that you do not treat every challenge as a problem, but treat every problem as a challenge and benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And um, fast forward to 2018, you have come to Solus University. Mm -hmm. What has been your experience at Solus University over these last four years or so? Um, my experience at Solusi, I see it as a way that God wanted me to learn some things. Uh, of course, I left the, U the, the Zimbabwe a long time before independence. I came back after independence. Didn't stay long because we were here 81, 85, we were gone back. So I really didn't know uh, what was uh, happening in Zim in terms of how people do things, how people perceive things and so forth. So. I could say that um, mentally I was still fixed on the Zimbabwe that I knew when I was young, the Rhodesia. I had not transitioned into Zimbabwe. So coming here did help me transition into Zimbabwe. Brilliant. So you have come into contact with the soil. Yes. <laughs> You're a daughter of the soil. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, no, that's great, that's great. And so, and, and so being at um, Solusi gives you this opportunity to reintegrate in, into the community, society, yes. and culture. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say there are some um, experiences that you have borrowed from your time in Huntsville, uh, Alabama, uh, and um, you, you are applying those as you come back? Uh, are there some experiences that you're thinking, 
it was a privilege to go through that kind of an experience. I'm finding that it helps me to adapt and to deal with um, issues better in um, the Zimbabwe of our time. One thing that I learned uh, as I was going through my schooling in the U.S. is that uh, when you learn, you learn to apply knowledge. You are not learning to just get a certificate. And so this has been my really um, uh, foundation to say, I'll learn to know so that I can assist others. And so that has really helped me when I came here, uh, uh, when I worked in, in the U.S., that you really have to know, if you don't know uh, what you are doing, you can easily be sued. You can make errors and so forth. So that has helped me uh, in communication and in documentation of what I do. And so I bring those uh, uh, here when I teach the students, when I work with the others, that communication is important. And no man, no, uh, man is an island. We are working as uh, teams and we work uh, collaboratively. So <clears throat> if we are going to achieve things, even here at Solus, Solus is a system. So we have to collaborate, we have to communicate. We cannot work as silos. So that's what I am using from uh, abroad. You know, and so you find that I easily communicate. I mean, my secretary knows what's going on. I see, see her a lot of things because when I'm go not there, she will have to continue. She's the one that has to bring everything to, uh, to, to bear because we have systems of keeping our records. We have students. We don't want students to be shortchanged just because I'm gone. No, there must be somebody else who knows, and I do that. A lot, and our, our my lecturers, I communicate with them, student problems, uh, uh, syllabi problems, exam problems, all that I communicate because we need to understand the whole academic system within uh, the our profession because our profession has external eyes. Here you have councils that look at our nursing programs, they look at the nutrition and dietetics, and we have a, even environmental health. So everyone must know about uh, what's going on. So communication becomes very important. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, you're coming through quite clear, quite clear. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, you've, you've read main mention of um, dietetics mm -hmm. and um, uh, nutrition and dietetics and uh, nursing. Mm -hmm. um, would you have any counsel for, for students who would want to take up these this programs? How would they benefit them? Uh, I, I know nursing is your forte, but maybe could we start with uh, nutrition and dietetics? Have you seen it to be useful in your, in, in, in your, in your exposure and experience? Yes, uh, I have seen it because uh, as a nurse working uh, 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 as a bedside nurse, we always collaborated with um, nutrition uh, dietitians or nutritionists because some of the diseases are because of poor eating habits or doing certain uh, behaviors that are not good like smoking or drinking so when they are these people are very sick we need to have a nutritionist abroad or a dietitian that will also look at the, uh, you know, the deficiencies that the person may have because of uh, their uh, 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 lifestyle. Yeah. So uh, nutritionists and dietitians are very important, both in the hospital setting and outside the hospital. Who is running the, uh, the, 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 um, um, the uh, uh, restaurants, the cafeterias, the hotels. It is nutritionists because there is food served there. So these professionals or these disciplines uh, are in high demand in developed countries and undeveloped countries. So a nutritionist, a dietitian, just like a nurse, 
will hardly be without a job unless you have poor workmanship habits. Then nobody's going to hire you because pretty, after you get in, pretty soon they know what kind of person you are and they'll let you go. Thank, thank you for that uh, advice. And uh, I remember reading this statement. If you do not eat your food like pills, you're going to end up um, eating your meds like food. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, 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 and... Um, for, for, for those of you who are viewing from the comfort of your spaces, should you want to consider dietary work, nutritional work, nursing work, the prophet said it, you are assured you will get, you will get placement. These are programs that are on demand and they are offered at Seleucia University. Let me turn to you, Prof, and say, um, for the time we have had, I, I've been uh, launching questions. Maybe do you want to speak freely? Is there anything that is on your mind that you want to share with our audience, our viewers that you have in mind? As I journeyed through life and the uh, occupation arena, what I have found is nothing beats integrity and honesty and transparency, communication. If you fail those areas, you will not uh, enjoy the success of your work. I have enjoyed nursing to the fullest. And uh, I say I enjoyed because when I was in the workplace, I enjoyed interacting with uh, the patients and they always enjoyed interacting with me. Even in the U.S. way I had, they say you have an accent, but they always asked, where is that nurse with the accent? They wanted me to, to be there. And I have, um, had, I have not had bad events when I worked because my bottom line is that I must be honest because that's what God expects me to do, to be honest. And then... Also, I ex you know, exposed myself to a lot of learning. I did not wait for learning that came from the lecturer. I did a lot of my own digging. And up to now, I'm an avid Googler of everything that I, I don't know. Whether it is nursing or anything outside nursing, me, I believe in teaching yourself. As long as I'm living, there will be things that I'll need to learn. I have to learn them. When I went to the, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to learn when I went to the U.S. and had children is that my children should never be embarrassed of me. Why? Because I'm ignorant. So not, uh, I did not only learn nursing, but I learned how to cook American food so that my children could bring friends home, even though they're African kids, bring children from mother so that they can see that the, even though we're Africans, but we do know. And so my children always brought, uh, on the, especially on the Sabbath after church, they would bring friends home to eat. Why? Because mama knew how to cook. So I learned how to cook the American foods for the purposes of my children to grow up in an environment that is loving. Permission to rephrase this one. Being African is no excuse to be ignorant. <laughs> Go and learn. Be an avid Googler. She, 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 she's a senior citizen and she still learns mm -hmm. things that are beyond even her space. It, it, it might not be anything to do with nursing, but you're still learning and acquiring yes. knowledge. Yes, you, yes, yes. And it should not always be examinable stuff. Mm -mm. Just no. know. Just know. Just know. Just and know. When you discuss with others, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to be just sitting there looking at others, but you want to enjoy the discussions. But if you don't want to learn outside of your discipline, you'll always be mom when others are, are enjoying discussions. I hear you. I hear you. Now, Prof, um, you are leaving Solis University. I have that on good authority. 
in a, in in a, in, a, in a few in a few weeks or so mm-hmm. um as you are living uh the campus your office did do you have any inside counsel that you could uh, share with uh, an incoming dean an incoming lecturer um who may be assuming responsibility would you have any pointers to share um what i can say is try and good service to give good service you must be a communicator you must be transparent you must be just you must be fair there is no favors when students come and say dean can you do me a favor i say no there are no favors on this earth i you do what is required because when i do you a favor there's somebody out there out there waiting to see if i've done you a favor and they will require and if i be doing favors all the time then so lucy is not going to have a good reputation it is going to be costly to so lucy all the favors that i have done so there's no favors the policies of the institutions are the favors that I can go with and I'm saying to those who come after me the policies are there to assist us to be just and fair eh uh, being hard to students applying policies is the best way to teach students to be good practitioners when they go out they'll be honest and they'll be fair and they'll have integrity and they'll practice with ethics Zimbabwe we need people who are like that why in the healthcare because now patients the hospital does not provide medications families have to buy medications bring it for the nurse to give a nurse that is not ethical that is not honest will give it to the his his or her own family member who's sick but if we teach them to be honest and fear god they will be the best practitioners man a prolific writer writes the book education and says the world is in want of men and women who will not be bought or sold men will be true to duty as the needle is to the pole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know men will stand for the truth even though the heavens will fall. fall. And 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 the prophets made it clear if you are going to make it in the professional space be a god. Be a person of integrity. Mm-hmm. Be a person of honesty. Be somebody who is fair and just. Be somebody who communicates. And it we live in communities that are highly litigious. But even then do all these things they are going to see you through your illustrious life and journey in the workspace yes indeed prof it has been a pleasure having you on amanda's creativeers okay thank you so much mr mkandla for having me it has been a pleasure amen god willing god willing we may um interview you when you are back home in alabama we may have to find other you know means of uh coming back right. and finding out how you're settling just in case you are being reintegrated to Alabama again now that you've been <laughs> in Zimbabwe in Africa for six years mm-hmm. you may find yourself having to retweak mm-hmm. the accent <laughs> you're no longer the neighbor with the accent the, the, the nurse with the accent now you're the neighbor with an accent that's it yes. yeah we'll need yes. to work on the accent now again well yes. thank you so much for calling okay. and uh, having us here thank you thank you have a blessed day 